my burdens down at your feet. And many times I don't know what to do. I will cast all my cares upon you. I cast all my cares. of my burdens down at your feet, and many times I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you, and many times I don't know Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Give you just a few minutes to find your seats. As we begin this morning, I do have a few announcements for us. Miss Erling Carpenter has been moved to Greenview. Uh, Barbara Cummings is at the Medical Center in Bowling Green. Uh, They've also asked for continued prayers for Brooke Humble and Donna Russell. If you'll look at your Pathfinder, just some announcements there. You'll see that we have our picnic in the park coming up in September. There's also a gospel meeting at the Bethany Church of Christ. If you're part of our youth group, we have a Shine Youth Rally next Saturday, August the 21st. Um, and then today, a special announcement for today, this afternoon, we're having our back to school bash. Um, so if you have ch uh, youth group age, Sunshine Street age children, our families, we would invite you to stay, uh, go home and return, stay with us after services this morning. We're gonna have um, some fun. Across the street, we've got inflatables, we've got games, we've got uh, so much fun to be had. There'll be lunch provided. Uh, Chef Kirby will be cooking hamburgers and hot dogs for us. So lunch is provided. Uh, bring a swimsuit, a bicycle, a hoverboard, whatever kids hang out on these days. But just plan on staying and hanging out with us this afternoon. And then we will conclude, we will conclude that with a devotional with our worship, our evening worship this evening at the same time at 630. However, we will be meeting in the warehouse. Our speaker this evening will be Brother Jerry Jernigan, so we're super excited to hear his message. But once again, uh, tonight's worship service will be at 6.30 at the warehouse. We look forward to having you guys over there. Thank you. bow our heads in prayer. Father, thank you for this beautiful Lord's Day. Father, most importantly, <clears throat> thank you for Jesus who died for our many sins. It is through him that we have salvation. Father, please be with those that are, that are in the hospital and they're sick. Be with their families. Father, be with us as we're getting ready to go into worship so we can praise your name in song and hear your lesson today and take it and use it in our everyday lives be a good example this week as we go back out to work father thank you for the weather the rain that we have had for those that haven't had rain lord i know that you will bring us rain because you take care of us father thank you again for blessing each and every one of us be with us as we go through this worship service and like I said let us praise your name sing songs to glorify your name and hear the lesson be with the elders and the deacons that take care of the church the youth ministers and the preacher be with them and their families 
Father, again, keep us safe from harm. And it's Jesus' name we pray. Amen. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger. the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. Loving most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the recently thinking about the changes that I've seen in my life and folks like Glenn and Bobby and Michael and Jimmy uh, they can uh, remember the same changes and then I think about the the folks that I see like Mr. Jimmy and Frank that are older than I am that have, the changes that they've seen and then I think back to my, the th changes that my grandfather saw before he passed in the late 60s. And to think about the changes as we see elements of history uh, that have occurred uh, the last 2,000 years. But there's one thing in all of that change that has not changed. It's just as true today as it was all those years ago. And that's God's love for us. His love manifested in the giving of his son as a sacrifice for our sin. He took our place, the separation from God that we should have seen and should still see, he suffered. With those things in mind, let's go to God in prayer. Father, we approach the cross on our knees and we see uh, the man 
Jesus hanging there, your son, and realize, Father, that because of his obedience, he now sits at your right hand, and that through our obedience and your marvelous grace, someday we can join him there. Help us, Father, to remember these things as we eat this bread. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Father, as we continue to remember this great sacrifice and demonstration of love that you have for us, we again look to the cross and we see your son hanging there and we see the blood that he shed from the crown of thorns, from the nails driven in his hands and his feet. And then we see where the spear was thrust into his side and we see the blood and the water that came forth. And we realize that it was through this letting of blood that we can gain forgiveness for our sins. We thank you for this great sacrifice. And Father, may it ever be at the forefront of our minds every day. And how much you mean how much we mean to you and what you were willing to do to uh, provide the sacrifice for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's give thanks for our wonderful blessings that God has provided for us. Father, we live in a blessed country, in a blessed world. And Father, often we forget that all of this comes from you and is provided for us to bring honor and glory to you. We ask that your forgiveness for this and we express to you our gratitude for all that you've done for us and continue to do and we ask that you help us to use what you have blessed us with to honor you in Christ's name we pray amen I'll be reading from Proverbs 30, 8 through 9. Proverbs 30, 8 through 9. Keep falsehoods and lies far from me. Neither Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may, never, I, may not, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and dishonor the name of my Lord. As a deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You Thee. 
you don't mind to join and stand with me in these next two songs. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, I'm standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God I'm standing, standing Standing on the promises of God Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God, I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of stand to praise you, but I fall on my knees. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is so weak. Light the fire in my soul. be seated.
Today we begin a new series called Jesus, Ruler of My Personality. And we want to look at some personality characteristics that are so important in the Christian life. The Carnegie Group did an analysis several years ago and came to the conclusion that successful people are successful due to about 15% intellectual and about 85% personality. So let's consider our personalities today. God's blessed us with different ones. Some may be all right, some may not be. But he's blessed us with different personalities and different temperaments. And so each has its strengths and each has its weaknesses. But our Lord lived a perfect life. He lived a balanced life. That helped you if I turn the button on? All right, good deal. Each personality we're going to look at the next few weeks are personalities that our Lord Possess. So if you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to Luke chapter 16, and we're going to look at one of these personalities today. The one we're going to look at today, people put a high premium upon, and that's intensity. Intensity. You know, we are an intense group of folks. If you don't believe so, bring up the subject of mask. If you don't believe so, let's talk about vaccinations. Man, you'll get, <laughs> the people get intense. They get, they get to really thinking hard about this and will give you uh, their opinion on this. You know, August the 1st, uh, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I, I came in from working in the garden, and I had what I thought was indigestion, and it turned out to be a little bit different from indigestion, and Janet took me to the hospital, and uh, I had an EKG and blood work, and, and so I was very thankful that they were intense on trying to find out what was wrong with me. I appreciated that so much. They, they put me in the hospital that night. The next morning, Dr. Adams comes in, and, and we talk for quite some time. And then, you know, I, I found myself in an ambulance going to Nashville. Again, we were all intense on trying to find out what was wrong and what we could do to repair this. I had never been through anything like that before, and, and uh, I, I was just certainly glad to know that they were so intense on making sure that I was okay and that I could be restored back to, to the best health that I could possibly be. I appreciate that so much. I read a story about a young lady. Her name was Georgian Johnson. And this, I thought about this because we, we ran in the in the. In the the garden spot run yesterday, but Georgian started what she thought was a 10K run. And after she started, she realized that she was running a marathon. And she said that this guy had on a shirt, and on the, on the back of the shirt, it had that, that Nike slogan that just said, just do it. So she decided, well, I'm going to see if I can. So she ran that marathon and finished 83rd in the group of women that, that ran that big marathon. You know, we applaud that. We, we appreciate her intensity. We, we, we like that. We see that a lot, you know, in, in the athletic world. But do we see it in spiritual settings? Where are we with that? What do we have passion for? What brings out our intensity? Are we intense about our family? Are we intense about sports you know i i like uk ball i like westerns games i, I enjoy going up there I, i'm a cincinnati reds fans I, i'm pretty intense about that you know and, and you probably have your team are you intense about your job performance uh, even in the ministry we're in we're pretty intense about that i mean i want to do the very best that, that i can and so uh, we, we, we do worry about that. A successful college basketball coach once said, many people have the will to win, but many have the will to prepare. So what are you intense about? Well, Christ tells a story in Luke chapter 16 that talks about intensity, and he gazes into his audience as he talks about this. And so today, as we look at this, we're going to talk about three different feelings toward intensity. Intense 
creativity. And so when we read this, we're pretty familiar with this. Oftentimes we call this the parable of the shrewd manager or the parable of the unjust steward. So if you have your Bibles this morning, Luke chapter 16, let's begin there in verse 1. Jesus told his disciples, There was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and he asked him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account to yourself. Give an account of your management skills because you cannot be a manager any longer. And the manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job and I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do. So that when I lose my job here, People will welcome me into their houses. So he called one of his master's debtors, and he, and he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? 800 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, Take your bill, set down quickly, and make it 400. And then he asked the second, How much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. And he told him, Will you take your bill and make it 800? And the master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of light. And may God bless the reading of his word this morning. I hope we're able to look at this and see just exactly what Jesus is wanting us to see. You know, this, this story, this particular parable, and yet Christ does not call it a parable. It very possibly could have been a true story since he didn't call it a parable, but most of the time we do label that as being a parable. One of the things I want us to see is the owner here does not represent God. In most of the parables that, that our Lord teaches, God is in there somewhere, but he's not here. And notice, too, in this particular parable that everybody's looking out for number one. Greed motivated their every mood. And it's easy to read this and really misunderstand exactly what our Lord is wanting us to see here. But what he's trying to tell us is this man used his means as a shrewd manager to gain a temporary reward. He couldn't work anymore. He wasn't in physical conditioning to where he couldn't dig, and he was, he was too proud to beg, and so now he's just looking for a place to stay. So those that own the master money, he's saying, well, if, if you'll pay a little bit less, they'll welcome me into their home, and for a temporary fix, I'll have some place to stay. Now, that's basically what I get out of this story. It has a lot to do with money. The Wall Street Journal gave a definition of money. It says money is an article which may be used with the universal passport except for heaven. And isn't that true? A universal provider except for happiness. And we work so hard for a dollar. People will do strange things for a dollar. Look what this guy says. The master commended the dishonest manager because he'd acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own with dealing with their own kind than are the people of light. Now notice here our Lord is he's not approving the behavior of the bad manager. But the sad truth is Jesus is sharing with us that these people will use more creativity in an effort to make money than we do in an effort to save souls and to teach people about Jesus Christ. Now, that's really what this short, simple parable is all about. We'll use more creativity. Do you know in the Toyota plant in Georgetown, Kentucky, reports that 65% of its employees never miss a day of work? I found that interesting. 
but I found out also that if you don't miss a day of work, your name goes in the hat, and they give away 15 brand-new Toyotas every year to those that don't miss work. I'd attend, too, wouldn't you? I'd want my chance for my name to be in the hat so that I could win this car. But you see, the world is so wise in encouraging people in the workplace. We, we can make a difference. Notice what he says in verse 9. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself so that when it's gone, you'll be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Jesus reversed the story really the way that it should be. He says, use the money you have to gain friends, to gain influence for the, the eternal reward. Well, what's the reward? Well, the reward is Jesus Christ. He can save us from our sins. It's to glorify God through our lives. What, what would happen this morning if all of us had brought a guest to church? Just think what our attendance would be this morning. If we'd have been a little creative and had somebody else to come with us. You know, we're trying to be creative here. If you'll notice in your Pathfinder this morning, if you open it up on the inside, it's talking about the what and where of life groups. We're trying to be a little creative. We're trying to um, build our attendance and build relationships and grow in God and love others. Reach out to our world, serve them together. Read that article this morning. It's good. Um, and I hope that you'll help us have the passion for this. We want this to work. The passion to gain friends for an eternal reward. In the book of Ephesians, it says, Be careful, very careful then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. You know, it, it just, um, it really pays for us to be creative in the things that we do. I, I can remember back in, in the 80s when the idea started with Taylor Christian Camp. And a and few men went down and, and, and looked at some property and wrote a check with money they, that they didn't have to, to buy a piece of property so that we could go down there and teach children since 1985. Isn't, isn't that wonderful? But just think about the vision that they had and, and, and the ability to create and for the kingdom of Christ. So there, there are all kinds of opportunities for us to grow. I'd like to list some today. Does the teaching of our church constantly teach biblical truths and show that they apply in our daily lives? Do our weekly services help people connect with God? Are we doing the very best we can do with excellence. It's a hard word when you have cotton mouth at the moment. First thing I'm going to do Monday is repair that slide that's up here that says do this in remembrance of me. And we, we've got remem and they got the C. I'm going to fix that tomorrow, I promise. That's two weeks in a row that that broken slide's been up there. But we do try to do everything with excellence. Are we willing to step out in faith trying to do something so big that if God isn't in it, we will fail. You know, I really hope that you'll pray and think about small groups. I think it's a great investment for us here. I, I believe that will lift us up, uh, give us uh, some encouragement. Is there spirit of harmony and cooperation among the leaders in the congregation? Do our people love each other, and are they seeking to meet one's other physical, spiritual, and emotional needs? I'm so encouraged when people come up and say, you know, we have somebody we need to add to our prayer list. We need to think about them this week and pray for them and for their health. I appreciate that so much. But you see, some people would like to coast. They don't want to do these things. And, you know, it's not what we have because it won't really affect things 50 years from now. It won't matter. But what we do today is what we can give away for the advancement of the Lord's church. Look what it says in the book of Matthew. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and, and, and thieves destroy and where thieves can break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also.
God called us to play the game, but not to just keep score. But if we're faithful stewards, he's going re- to reward us generally, generously and, and bring honor to his name. You know, if, if we live in a, in, in a fine house, let's use it to invite guests to bring them to Christ. If we have money, let's use that to advance the gospel. There, there are so many creative things that we can use as resources to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look what the proverb writer wrote for us. If you're wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. You know, take your children. Teach them early when they're very young on on the importance of giving things away and helping people. You know, that's been one of the fun things that I've been able to do with some of my grandchildren in this garden. We just load vegetables up and take to people, and we love to get it, give it away. Well, let's, let's do that with our monies and other things that we have. Let's, let's really help folks and teach them early. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 2, Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give, give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. So let's work hard to share our riches to the glory of God. The next thing I want us to look at is intense honesty. Christ follows up this story with with observations on, on, on character. Look what he said in verse 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little can also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you've not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? You know that 48% of American workers admit that they steal from their employer. 48%. Isn't that amazing? A Gallup poll that I also saw this week goes through several occupations. And do you know who they deem number one as being the most reliable? I I thought this was interesting. Number one, nurses. Nurses. Isn't that cool? Number two were pharmacists. Number three was clergy. Now, what I get from that is we just uh, need to be reliable. We need to agree with what the proverb writer says, the integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. John Wright says, integrity is your best friend if you keep your priorities right. Simple things lead to big things. And if you're honest with the little things, you're going to be honest with the big things. In the book of James, chapter 5, verse 12, Above all, my brothers, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. James and Jesus are basically saying, you you know, when we open our mouths, only the truth should come out of it. The third thing I want us to see today is intense loyalty. You know, we talked a few weeks ago on that series about Jesus being the Lord of our lives. Look what he says in this next verse. No servant can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other, or he may be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You can't do it. And in the next verse, the Pharisees heard this, and and, and they were amazed at Jesus. You know, the Greek word here really means they were turning their noses up at him. 
And that's sort of what leads me to believe that this really can be a true story because of this one verse. When the Pharisees heard this, they turned their noses up at They didn't like what he says. And he said to them in verse 15, You're the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of men, but God knows your hearts. What is highly valued among men is is detestable in God's sight. You cannot serve two masters. Which is it going to be? There's no room for casual Christianity. There is a place for loyalty. There's a place for allegiance. And I'm on your team, Lord. That's where I want to be. I want to be there. But I'm afraid we're more like the Pharisees than we want to admit it. We we turn our noses up sometimes at some of the things that we hear. And so we put more importance on sports. We put more importance on our hobbies, on our travels, on our toys that we have. When really we, we should be concerned with your soul, my soul, whether your heart belongs to him. And really and truly, folks, the world needs to know where we stand. That's what this parable is about this morning. So what is your intensity? What is your passion? I hope your passion is to live a life for Christ. So this morning, if you've lost your intensity, will you reconsider today? And if you need to come and to repent and let us pray for you, would you do that this morning? And how about using your intensity today to confess the sweet name of Jesus? How about using your passion today to put him on in the robes of baptism? Have your name added to the Lamb's book of life. To be forgiven of your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. How about having that passion, that intensity to do that today? Any way we can help you today. Would you please do it now as we stand and sing? Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power.
Please bow. Father in heaven, I thank you for this wonderful day that you've created for us to live in. Thank you for the, the rain that we've had these past couple of days. Please help it to nourish the crops and the grass. And Father, please help us have a good rest of the day. Please help those who are staying for the fun afternoon that we're going to have. Please help them to have lots of fun. Please help those who are traveling home to, to make it there safely. Father, please be with us and please help us to take the lesson that we've learned today into our hearts and use it in our everyday lives. Father, thank you once again for Jesus and the sacrifice that he made and for the sacrifice that you made. Please be with us all and please forgive us of all our many sins. In Christ my prayer. Amen.